Hey everybody, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and I'm back for another interview for the Oracle Groundbreakers Yatra um, tour in India, and I'm here with Kevin Wittig from Germany. Kevin, welcome to the program. Hi, Jim. Uh, great to be here. It's really nice to meet you. I, I reached out to... Um, well, a lot of the speakers, you know, it's a pretty big speaker list for this conference. And uh, your name came up. I read your bio. We've never met before, but I was really interested. So I'm glad you responded. And um, so um, you got some really interesting things in your bio that I wanted to talk about, a lot of open source and Linux stuff and just basically software development in general. But let's start off with your talk. You're going to be giving a talk at this online Yatra, this India Yatra. Um, and uh, what are you going to be talking about? So I will uh, give basically an uh, introduction to blockchain for mostly focused to developers. And the idea is to a um, little bit um, just get some understanding, look behind the, the curtain, so to say, get an understanding like how can you interact with blockchain? What is blockchain? To remove this kind of black box effect, many people have it. Like they don't know, is it like a database? Inter do you interact with it like a web service or whatever? And uh, I just recently switched into the whole blockchain topic because I started my PhD in this uh, area last year. And also I jumped in from a completely non-blockchain developer background and I hope I can kind of, um, yeah, just help people getting in touch with it so that we lose a little bit this kind of buzzwordy mentality about it maybe yeah so a lot of the block i mean i've heard a lot of blockchain in the news in the last few years i mean i talk about the mainstream news i mean obviously it it's a topic of discussion in the technology news but it's always tied to bitcoin in the mainstream news right and um but it's it, it, but it's those are two different things can you, you know, tease them apart a little bit uh yeah so one could argue that maybe Bitcoin was the first public implementation of a technology that is very much based on blockchain as a concept. So then we had Bitcoin, which is a currency. So it's a very focused application or use case of blockchain. And then the next big thing that came was Ethereum, which is sometimes people also think about it as a currency, but it's really not. It's more like a world pro a programmable computer. It's like kind of cool, a really distributed computer idea. And then like after those two things came, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, both as public blockchain networks, we got also many companies jumping into this area, right. like um, yeah, IBM was a very big player in this area, especially, and they um, started to develop open source blockchain technologies that are then actually more focused for enterprise usage and actually like not public anymore, not, not, no public networks anymore. And then the community started also to argue like, is this still blockchain? Because the fundamental concept of blockchain used to be a public network where everyone can participate. And nowadays we have a little bit more diverse uh, set actually of, of kind of uh, kinds of blockchain. So to say we have this proof of work, classic ones like Bitcoin or everyone says, oh, blockchain, it takes so much energy. Yes, this is true for those public proof of work ones. But nowadays we have different runs by group, run by, by group or consortium. They use a concept like proof of authority and they are not using or consuming much more energy than any other distributed system, like whatever network system, internet components. So uh, it became a very, very diverse uh, technology. And I try to like shine a little bit of light onto this topic also in my talk. Interesting. Okay, so so um, is it is it like an entry level you get to start with? Obviously, entry level for developers. But I mean, is it like you know starting off sort of a talk? So yeah, I, I try to make it entry level, but I I want to go like a little bit deep, at least with like certain uh, mathematical concepts or computer science concepts that are in there. So it's definitely focused uh, for people that have a good uh, technology understanding and also uh, understand things like networking and so on. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so how, how did you get uh, hooked up with the, uh, actually with the Groundbreakers Yatra in India? Uh, is this, have you been to India? Have you been presenting to Indian developers at all? 
So um, I've never been to India myself. Um, I've presented to Indian developers when they were not in India, but somewhere <laughs> in Europe also. Um, and um, yeah, I always would have loved to go to India. Now, of course, it's not possible to travel there in person because of the whole Corona situation. But still, I saw the um, um, call for papers pop up. It was either on Twitter or maybe we got an email in the uh, Groundbreakers mailing list or so. And I just thought, yeah, cool. It's a totally different audience. Let's maybe just submit something. Like I'm super interested in getting in touch also with other communities from other parts of the world yeah. because I'm kind kind of used to the European uh, circus. So um, yeah, I'm very excited to get in touch with other people and other communities there. Good. That's really good because I, um, I've been to India and I've interacted with this Oracle community a lot. And um, so I've gotten to know a lot of these people and, and they're really, really interested in new things. They're really hungry, um, very engaging. Actually, they're very, very engaging as well. So I think this is going to be a real treat for them to hear from you. Um, at least now digitally, maybe next year physically. Um, it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is development. Um, you are into open source, you're into you know, agile, um, extreme programming, things like this. Um, I'm particularly interested in um, how developers solve really, really hard problems, just you know, from an engineering perspective. I, I've been, always been very, very impressed with how deeply these people can think and focus. Um, because, I mean, I spend a lot of time in marketing, and marketing is not a deep thinking sort of a discipline. It's much more on the surface. I'm trying to be nice here. Um, and um, no, what I mean, though, seriously, is um, it takes a lot of thought to build highly scalable systems that don't break. Um, and, and so I'm wondering how development has changed now as a result of a billion people having to be at home. Um, since you're into FOSS and Linux, Linux obviously was, you know, obviously came from a, a distributed development system. So we don't all have to be in the same room. However, there are benefits to being in the same room. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I definitely have a feeling with my team, the team I'm leading in my research lab, um, um, I also feel the difference of the current situation and how we had to adapt our working style and it's in certain ways a challenge. So I would say that the classic agile methodologies benefit extremely from being on-site together, close on-site collaboration that also works very good with a diverse and heterogeneous group. However, now, since we are that remotely uh, like distributed, so to say, we're distributed, we are more or less disconnected in a certain way, um, I think some of the classic uh, methodologies don't work as good anymore. At least that's my experience. Other experiences might differ. So uh, we try to then move more in a direction that is similar to how uh, open source gets developed and open source gets developed in a very asynchronous style. Mm -hmm. And I would say normal classic agile was kind of synchronous. So you're on site together kind of as a team, as a mob nowadays even. And um, now you have to change. And what I, and we still, it's still a challenge for us, but what we try to do now and where we try to become better with is um, written long form communication as a way to communicate ideas and discuss ideas. And that is the old school style, how Linux is developed. Yes, they exactly. have mailing lists and it's really long form <laughs> discussions yeah. there. They really think a lot about, maybe not always, <laughs> sometimes they're also just angry, but uh, in, in general, they have very well um, sought through the, the messages they, they will write and how they discuss things it's not like typing in slack as a chat no no and if you um if you use github for this github issues pull requests i think it, it works to a certain degree well but we all need to get still better with it also it expects that people are kind of experts already so i think it's very hard if you now have a heterogeneous group that has a different skill set maybe even a different shared language then it's a big challenge 
You actually, you mentioned several things in there that really intrigued me. One is the mailing lists. I really miss mailing lists. I used to work in Solaris and, and um, you know, at Sun. Uh, now I'm in marketing. And, and, and the way that the kernel engineers used to communicate um, is was just like you said, it's long form mailing list, you know, you would have architectural arguments and debates and approvals and things like this. Uh, you couldn't change the slightest thing in Solaris without really arguing your point, you know, you want to break these interfaces, right? I was really struck by this, by this method of communication, the detail, you know, and you were having these discussions with people all over the world because Solaris was always a distributed development methodology. Um, and, but you know, now it seems like a lot of the sort of the modern, you know, techniques the last, I don't know, five or 10 years or so. Yeah, it's a lot of slack. It's a lot of chat. It's a lot of, you know, together. Um, but as you mentioned, Linux, Linux was developed in the old way, or I, I hate to say that word old, but nevertheless, um, I miss the mailing lists because I got used to communicating that way with everything, you know. Um, so is it now there's if this change is taking place, are developers adapting to that? Because a lot of the developers, the younger ones, aren't really used to those other systems, right? Um, yeah, so hmm, it, it's a good question. So you can have a certain similar, um, similar flow also with uh, things like GitHub issues and pull requests. Um, I think Slack is definitely a different flow. And I think there are certain very big disadvantages to, to Slack because of the shortness, because of the lack of discoverability and, and, and being able to search things and so on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So I, like mailing lists actually were before my time. I was not really participating in open source in mailing lists. So I was participating in open source when GitHub was already there. So that's what I, when I started to contribute to open source. So for me, the GitHub model with issues, with pull requests, forking and so on, is a model that makes sense for me. But maybe it's just because I like grew up with this as a, as a developer and like I said, oh, mainly this, it's not uh, how I, I want to have everything in my GitHub, everything with the code, it's easy for me to get started. And then the next generation will say, oh no, GitHub issues, it's slow, it's boring, we want to have the next new thing, I think. Uh, it's just a change in, in generation paradigms, maybe, all the time. Yeah, interesting. Really interesting. I don't know why I'm interested in this, but I am. <laughs> um, also, I read in your bio, this, the, actually, the term software craftsman. So what do you mean by that? Yeah, so uh, the political correct way to call it nowadays is software crafting so this changed a couple of years ago but sometimes in the bio i'm still using oh the yeah, yeah i see got it. it yeah okay yeah it's also my fault um so it's um it, it came it came as a as a follow-up um as a, as a follow-up community to agile actually uh when at a certain point um the community saw that um, agile which originally contained a lot of technical disciplines as well. Extreme programming is a highly technical methodology, it's, but it's an agile methodology. Um, but the community saw that a lot of the consulting around agile was very focused on Scrum, was very focused on project management and the project management process and right. business flows and so on. And it kind of dropped the technical excellence, which was originally a core value of agile, also in my opinion still is. Uh, and therefore, they, this new community assembled that really highlighted this focus on, on technical excellence, like um, we have the software craftsmanship manifesto, it was called, which is kind of a new spin on the Agile manifesto, which takes the, sa uh, the same rules with this um, not only X, but also Y, and then it has like not only uh, working software, but also well-crafted software and those kinds of values. And um, it became a really cool community. So in Germany, it's also a, a quite big community with meetups, with conferences, where people are really, or used to be really in this very technical aspects, like test driven development, you would do coding dojos together and those kind of things. And now also the whole movement changed a little bit the focus. So nowadays they are also very much uh, 
interested in uh, social interactions and dynamics of teams. So they are very focused on this. They brought up this mob programming discipline and those kind of things. So it's not that 100% technical focus anymore. No. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I actually took the scrum training last year um, <clears throat> in California. And uh, I, I, I was very, I mean, I liked it. I thought it was a good framework. I mean, I've taken a lot of training for you know, project management, these kinds of things. I think for as a project management kind of a uh, framework, it was one of the better ones. Um, but uh, I, I, I felt that it, it it did i don't know it just it it seemed to me one step away from actual development it seemed like a project management tool you know and so it's interesting that you actually 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 uh, describe it like that um still still very good and i still i still use it actually in my job it's, so it's also not a completely a fault of scrum um so scrum actually says that you should have technical disciplines in place it just doesn't tell you which ones uh, but right. I think in one some of the original trainings or whatever, like when when who who were it, Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland, like they were also saying like, oh, you can also incorporate the methodologies, the technical methodologies of extreme programming, for example. And that's mm -hmm. also how we used to do it some years ago in one of my software teams. We were doing essentially Scrum from the product management or process management side, but from a technical uh, working style, it was extreme programming. And I think this was a very well, it was a nice uh, combination. And um, in this regard, I also think Scrum gives you like just enough process to have everything a little bit more structured. And sometimes a bit structure is good because it shows certain pain points. Right, right. Yeah, I, I definitely felt that tried to strike a balance there. You need a little bit of structure, you know. Um, okay, let's um, switch gears a little bit here. You're a Groundbreaker Ambassador. And um, I know working at Oracle, there's, there's a desire to sort of grow this program and, and you know, and, and interact with more uh, people. We have this, you know, Oracle ACES program in here, and this is a Groundbreaker Ambassador you know, program over here. Um, the Java Champions is a, actually a third program. Um, so what, how did you get involved in the Groundbreaker Ambassador program? So it was, I think, 2018 when I was at the Java Zone conference in um, Norway, in Oslo. And um, I gave a workshop about test containers, which is the open source project where I'm one of the maintainers. And um, I got a message, I think, on Twitter from uh, from Jen, Jennifer McCrossen, who is kind of responsible for a lot of the community activities also around Oracle. She just said, okay, uh, do you want to come by the Oracle booth? I want to talk to you. I said, all right, sure, <laughs> I came. Then we talked and she explained to me back then the program was called Developer Champion, I think. So it was a different name. And then oh, when right. I joined shortly afterwards, it switched to Groundbreaker Ambassador. Right, right. And a couple of years ago. Yeah. 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 And, and that's how I got in. And um, yeah, I, I like to um, participate in, in the community, like speaking at conferences, speaking at uh, Java user groups, at meetups and so on. So in this way, um, of course, the program um, like supports me greatly. And I think it's great because not always uh, the employee would support you in this way. Sometimes they do, sometimes not. And um, of course, and also having the available uh, availability to, to use um, Oracle Cloud basically for those kind of demos or whatever. It's also very nice. And it actually is amazing to see the development of Oracle Cloud in the, in the last years. So yeah. when, I, when I started using it, it was, to be honest, it was not there yet, but <laughs> it became pretty good and very easy to use now, much yeah. easier to use than Amazon. And actually, I'm not doing commercials here. It's really no, easy yeah. to get started now and uh, that I like very much. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I, I know a lot of the database people. I don't know as many of the cloud engineers as I do on the uh, database side, but um, I'm starting to get to know a few of those guys now in this new job. Um, but yeah, from what I understand, Gen Two is it's a it's a different code base and it's it's just you know substantially better. So it's, I'm glad to hear that um, for my own self preservation. Self preservation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hey, you know, I mean, that's just I mean that happens. I mean, you know, technologies grow and die. You know, just because you come out 
you know, when you're actually in an early stage of something, uh, you can be competitive later. You know, there's plenty of examples of this, you know, throughout the history of uh, technology. All right, and Kevin. Not always the technically best ones. Oh, always, so. that's absolutely true. I mean, that's my goodness. We have, uh, I won't go there, but yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, and actually, that's true, not even in technology. That's true in all industries. You know, that's just a phenomenon of business, basically. Um, so, all right, Kevin, thanks a lot for coming by. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, uh, in the future, we can meet again live. Um, we get yeah, you to India. Um, if, if you've never been, it's it's quite an experience. It is uh, it is a life altering experience. Like as I like to describe it, I love it. Um, it's it, it's just phenomenal. The people are very very friendly, and they have some very serious developers there. So, um, and if I'm in Germany, whenever we're able to fly again, I'll I'll definitely stop by and say hello. Oh yeah, sure you should do. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Kevin. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All right, bye-bye now.